The word revolutionary is overused in healthcare. Virtually every new drug that comes on the market is described as a game changer or a miracle drug, and this can make us a bit desensitized to this type of language. When I look back at the past four decades of research into the management of HIV infections, revolutionary is the only word that I can use to describe it. The tireless work of activists, scientists, healthcare professionals, and the patients at the centre of it has managed to transform a disease with tragically high mortality rates into a manageable chronic condition, which for many can fall into the background of their lives. The antiretroviral therapies underpinning this progress have also changed dramatically in line with new advances, moving from complex multi-pill regimes to single daily doses with far fewer side effects. New drugs are constantly being developed with a focus on long-acting injectables and implants for increased convenience. This creates a complex toolbox for HIV specialists to use to help their patients. This can make life tricky for us out with these specialist teams, as we want to feel confident that any new treatment we're starting won't cause any problems with their antiretrovirals. But thankfully, there's an excellent resource to advise us on this called HIVDrugInteractions.org. This brilliant resource is available completely free without a login and it provides well-researched, easy-to-understand guidance on a massive range of drug interactions. Simply tick the patient's antiretroviral medications, then tick any co-prescribed medications you want to investigate, and the checker will do the rest. In the event of any interactions being detected, the More Info button will bring up a detailed description of the evidence base behind the interaction. The interaction checker even has a great feature where you can switch to a table view of all the available options and their comparative safety alongside the patient's antiretroviral medications. This really helps when we have a lot of options available, like choosing the next antidepressant or diabetes treatment for a patient. The evidence base around these interactions is constantly advancing. So I recommend checking this website before starting any new treatment for a patient on antiretrovirals. This is especially true for recommendations coming from other specialist teams like cardiology or mental health, as these teams might not have the information you do when you're making a decision. My other recommendation here is to ensure the patient's antiretrovirals are visible on the medication screen on EMIS. This is done by issuing them as a hospital-only medicine, and I've made another video demonstrating how to do this. Remember, the hospital-only medicines will stay active forever, and if we don't update them, this could lead to us checking the wrong interactions. To get around this, I recommend updating the hospital-only medicine every time we receive a letter from the specialists, or as a minimum, once a year with the medication review. This resource is so easy to use that I feel every prescriber should be using this before they write a prescription. It's actually so easy to use that I would advocate you teaching your patients how to use it. This might seem a bit odd, and for some patients this wouldn't be the right approach, but remember that we have no involvement as prescribers in assessing over-the-counter products, and the person selling that product may not be aware of these interactions. To illustrate this point, I've enlisted the help of a local sexual health consultant to highlight some interactions with over-the-counter products you may have not been aware of. The humble fluticasone nasal spray can cause terrible problems with boosted protease inhibitor regimes, for example, darunavir with ritonavir. The antiretrovirals here delay the metabolism of fluticasone, and the effects of this are not mild. There have been multiple cases of Cushing syndrome with this interaction, so it's really important we pick it up before patients start using this. Most antacids, like Gaviscon, contain what's referred to as multivalent metal ions. This means substances like magnesium or aluminium, and these are important here because they can stick to antiretrovirals like raltegravir, dolutegravir or bictegravir, reducing their absorption. And this can have huge implications for their effectiveness in managing HIV. The guidance is a bit different for each drug, so as with all of these examples, the interaction checker must be checked before giving an antacid. This next one's a growing presence on pharmacy counters. Erectile dysfunction drugs like sildenafil and tadalafil interact with a massive range of antiretrovirals. Some, like ritonavir, reduce metabolism, increasing toxicity, 
whereas others like efavirenz increase metabolism, reducing effectiveness. Again, check it every time. So there you have it. Now you don't need to be afraid when you're faced with HIV drug interactions. So long as you know what antiretrovirals your patient's taking and you use the HIV drug interactions website, you can't go wrong. See you next time.